I, Professor, I have just one more question for you. Um, well, I just want to know, well, first of all, I mean, I guess I have a lot of questions about all of the animals that I'm seeing and beasts that I'm seeing in your room, but I just, I guess I'll try and focus, try and focus on the question that you mentioned about the Galutians. You said that the Gal Galutians used like a similar strategy during the planar cleansing in the, in the East. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like what, how did they use this as part of a planar cleansing? Yes. Uh... Planar cleansing uh, was an attempt by this radical group of cultists, essentially, um, who uh, were attempting to initiate some sort of world-ending calamity. I don't quite know what their... I can't speak to... I didn't study them too much regarding their goals, but it's well known at this point that they were uh, ultimately defeated by what is now the Satarian League, and uh, during that time, uh, we did see some uh, evidence. Uh, some people did conduct uh, some field studies on a strange uh, mutated insect of sorts that had been terrorizing some of the uh, farmers and um, just the, the villages and things, attacking people and attacking crops and livestock. Um, almost like big mosquito looking things. Um, and they were mutated in some capacity, though I don't know we've ever quite deduced how that was done. Um, but I believe they were sent out by, uh, some of the forces of the, uh, uh, Arvori, I think. We're not really sure. We're still studying, uh, still hoping to gain some, some information, though much of that is done conducted in the East, as uh, we don't have as much access to the specimens uh, from the mm. time period. Mm. Okay. I'm going to go down in my little bag. I'm going to rip off a piece of paper, and I'm going to write in on it, Maeve Thorian, and hand it to her and be like, Professor, I was just, I'm giving you my name just so that if I ever come back to the Academy, would you be willing to maybe sponsor me? I I have so much to learn from you. And at that point, I hope Loon would pop his little head out. Um, and uh, I also want to know if I would recognize any of the beasts around there from the Feywild at all, if I could speak to them. Uh, yeah, if you want to roll a perception check. Um, but as Loon kind of pops his head out, she kind of does a quick double take from you to, to Loon and then back to you. Um, and she says, excuse me, uh, I was under the impression that you were an elf from the east, uh, but this creature you have with you, I've, I've never seen something like it before. What is it? He's, he's, uh, he's special. He's from the Fey. His the name Fae. is Lily. The Fey Realm? Mm-hmm. Magnificent. Are you from the Fey Realm as well? Sometimes people think I am. Well, that is something to behold. Could I, uh, could I see your, your friend there? Mm-hmm. She kind of holds him in her hand for a moment and, uh, just kind of, just seems to do like a, a once over for the most part, seemingly kind of trying to, to get a look at it, um, before, uh, she kind of shakes her head and, and hands him back to you. She says, yes, uh, so much to... To learn, but uh, again, I, I, unfortunately, I don't think now is the time. Um, but yes, uh, if, if you uh, wish to come back to the academy, um, you and Ziggy and even Zaire here, uh, I'd be hey. most interested in, in information hey. that you can Yes. Um, I would hope that you know I would maybe be able to come along with my group. Uh, I, you know, we've been working together. I have an, uh, a letter, uh, Delia, uh, Warm, Wormwood. Beachwood. Beachwood? Please tell me that you get it wrong. Game game. Game. Uh, it's me, Delilah Wormwood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, of course. I meant uh, no disrespect. Uh, uh, of course, and if you have a, a, a letter of entry from the headmistress, then by all means, I'm at your disposal. Um, I just meant that uh, each of them, uh, if they're willing to 
uh, allow me to study them to a degree. Perhaps we might be able to, to learn some some more about, well, Ziggy in particular, though uh, uh, the two of you, um, although Lou, the, or not, she doesn't know his name, Loon, uh, the, uh, this, this fey slug that you've brought with you is, is most interesting. I'd be, I'd be very excited to, to study more about his physiology. Um, but no, of course, if, if you all wish to come back um, and this matter with the guard and the headmistress has been resolved, then um, I would be happy to speak with you all more if I can be of any assistance. I don't want to come back. This is all very boring. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Tommy, don't be rude, and I'm going to slug him in the arm, even though I'm, I'm sorry. Him. I'm sorry. Thank you for your time, Miss. Uh, truthfully, you did. You have given us some helpful. I apologize. I've been a little. Um, I. I'm sorry. When I get bored, I get distracted very easily and say things I don't mean. Thank you for your help. We would not have uh, known which direction to go next if we had not come and spoke with you, so thank you. Well, always happy to uh, gain any access I can with Ziggy. Most interesting, that one. Uh, Isn't he the weirdest person you've ever met in your life? Absolutely. I thought he was a buffalo when I first met him. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you say that, because we've compared some of his uh, physiology to that of like a, the bovine, um, something like a cow or a bull, or even the buffaloes, which are typically- I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I can't do this. I'm so sorry, I can't, I don't care. And this is yes. very boring. Let's... I was rambling again. Uh, you all have some place to be. Um, guards, if you could, please escort them. Um, and they kind of step in and uh, she, uh, not rushing anybody out, but kind of begins to kind of walk you guys out the way a host might kind of get people yes. to- Please. Yes, show us the way, small fry. Thank you. Um, and so, uh, as you all are kind of ushered out of the academy, um, the two uh, members of the guard that you had been um, basically being chaperoned by uh, continue to lead you all uh, out and down the familiar path that you all have taken once before towards the uh, headquarters, which is just uh, a few blocks uh, away. Um, and uh, they sort of walk you up to the headquarters um, and uh, one of them tells you essentially to wait outside for a moment as they walk in. Um, and uh, after just a few minutes waiting outside, um, they return and usher you all into the headquarters. And instead of going to the cells that you had been previously uh, uh, held in during questioning, um, you are walked in to um, the uh, somewhat lavish, considering it's the city guard, um, but a uh, sort of office there is like ceremonial armor in a decorative sort of uh uh setup in one sort of corner um a large desk uh with um a very uh large broad-shouldered human seated behind it um and as you all enter the guard kind of uh snaps to attention for a moment uh and says uh captain osirian the individuals from the academy. And then just quickly kind of turns on his heels, walks out and closes the door behind him. Um, and uh, so what you see sitting at the desk is again, he's very, uh, very large human, even seated. You can tell that he kind of rivals Kami in, as far as size. Um, and while his face shows um, a bit of aging to it, uh, his size, the armor that he's got there, and the sword that is also uh, hanging next to his desk um, all suggest that he's still probably a pretty formidable fighter. Um, and as you all kind of enter and the doors close behind you, um, he uh, he's kind of seated at his desk and he's kind of scribbling at some papers and stuff, and he looks up and says, Ah! Good to see you all again. Uh, apologize for the circumstances. I know uh, you're certainly tired of being shepherded here to the headquarters. Um, but you must understand, uh, until all of this is settled, uh, an abundance of caution is expected. No, of course, it's okay. We, uh, you know, 
we're in your city. We want to respect your rule of law, of course. Uh, no harm, no foul, or no butterfly. I don't know. I'm lost. I don't know this anymore. Zayer. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, perhaps uh, you might be able to. Some type of foul. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Anyways, perhaps <laughs> I'm not the smartest. Um, we listen. We were, um, you know, craziest thing happened while we're here in the city. Here we are. Minding our own business, enjoying the city like you asked us. Keep a low profile while you're conducting your investigation. And we're walking around, uh, you know, we want to go see the water. So we travel up to the docks. And as we're walking down the street, what do we see but the giant fucking mass of rats piled on top of each other. Like they're all individual cells, part of a larger body. And uh, so... We uh, wanted to know what the hell was happening, and so uh, we ended up having a quick conversation with Professor Gedra at the, the Academy just now, actually. Um, and she mentioned that uh, you had seen something similar in your, uh, you know, amongst your ranks here in the city, and she thought it wise for us to perhaps uh, come share with you our own similar experience. See if there might be some way, maybe. We can help or uh, help each other learn about what might be done for this. Yes, uh, I'm unfortunately familiar with the problem that you're speaking of. Uh, the known food shortage here in the city is, of course, of great concern. Uh, however, after sending two different teams in to investigate the source of the problem, uh, city leadership ultimately decided that the Guard's resources might be better put to use, ensuring that what little shipments were still coming into the city were not compromised. And so we have uh, shifted our attention towards that goal for the time being. Um, compromised? What do you mean by that? Uh, to ensure that no uh, unscrupulous characters are stealing or otherwise... Um, uh, redistributing that uh, food, making sure you, it gets where it needs to go. You mentioned that you sent two teams, and did those teams return? Fortunately, we have not heard from them. Uh, at which point, it was decided to seal off that uh, that matter. And again, we have put our resources towards what the barons have requested which is uh, making sure that the shipments coming into the city uh, make it to the Alcazar uh, without issue. Wait, Clearly, you, said... you want to know what happened to your men, Captain. Uh, of course, of course I do. Um, but you must understand, we are at the whim of the leaders of the city, and as such, we are beholden to their orders. I take Both orders from someone else. We are not. I understand. Uh, I must say, I'm very sorry that I was not able to help you with this matter, and he stands up from behind his desk. Um, if there's anything else you need during your time here in the city, please let me know. And as he says this, he extends his hand out to uh, to shake your hand, Kami. I'll go and I'll uh, put my hand up to shake it and say, yes, of course. Uh, I mean... We both have a shared interest here of finding our lost teams. It may be that's something we can help with in our time. I'm sure, the, you know, it might be something you would appreciate, and we'd be happy. He grabs your hand and, and kind of shakes it, and he says, uh, Well, as, as I said, if this matter is to be, uh, to be solved, it is uh, not currently the priority of city leadership. Um, and as he takes his hand away, there's a small piece of paper left uh, in the palm of your hand. Um, and uh, and he says, you know, again, um, if there's anything else I can be of any assistance with, uh, please. Uh, I do hope that the investigation concludes uh, soon and you all are able to uh, return to whatever matter it is that brought you to the city in the first place. And he kind of gives you a friendly smile before kind of turning to the door and opening it. Yes, of course. And if... Uh... You see anything else of note, you let us know. 
And as he opens it, the two guards are still. Was that pun intended? <laughs> pun intended because um, he left you a note. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the two guards are still posted outside the door, um, but now as you all yeah. leave, um, they uh, they don't follow uh, as you're sort of walked out by the captain and to the front door and out through the front door um and yeah that is uh sort of the end of your your encounter as he kind of turns as he walks through the front door turns and returns to his office are we out of the building now yep okay. well that was weird uh yes uh it was the uh, not quite the interaction i was expecting um why don't we go uh, talk about it back at our room at the end of the visionaries, eh? What do you say? Hey. I telepathically to you, Zaire, say, we should, there's more to this. But I don't want to discuss it out here in the open. Okay. He just doesn't say anything. He, like, it doesn't. Okay. Kind of will just start walking. And kind of nods his head. Um... Yeah, but uh, there... you're, we're heading back towards the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys head back to the end. Um... Was there anything, sorry, while we were in the office, was there anything that we could have seen around the office if we were just like looking in terms of like picking up on any, any other like pieces of paper or anything that we could glance as to like what else the captain is working on or were things pretty stored away? Make a perception check for me. We'll say while you were in there. No. Well, that's the number I've been rolling all night uh, for. So that's a 10. 10. Um, yeah, not much. Uh, I mean, so in general, it's a very well-kept office. He is a military man, and mm -hmm. his office reflects it. There were, um, again, a number of sort of decorative pieces that were also meant to convey the fact that he was, you know um the captain of the city guard and he was, had a history in the military and like basically things that were like uh little pieces of pride for him but as far as like scraps of paper things like that everything was kept very tidy um he did have uh some scrolls kind of open in front of him um when, when he was writing uh when you all came in um but you unfortunately were not able to get a look at what they were uh are we... what they were saying okay are we are we still in the building no you've all left you've headed back to the inn yeah. at this point um yeah and you find a you know a seat among some of the tables there at this point i was gonna go i was gonna go up to our room oh you can go up to your room too if that's what you want yeah um and i'll i'll, I'll tell everyone i'll say uh well when i went to go shake the captain's hand he slipped me this and i'll open the note and read it wow uh, all it says is Dwarf's Pick Masonry, Dak Vudan, and what appears to be the captain's signature. Can you say that again? Yep, uh, it says Dwarf's Pick Masonry. The name Dak Vudan is written, D-A-K-V-U-D-A-N. And then would, what would be the captain's signature on it. Would Zaire recognize that name? Um, yeah, probably just from traveling through the city. Dwarf's Pick Masonry is, um, the mason of the city. Um, they are somewhat well-known, um, especially within the Lake District. They have designed many of the buildings, the sort of fancy houses and things in the Lake District, um, as well as, uh, the walls of the city when the city first expanded. Um, they rebuilt essentially the city walls to be bigger and stronger and to encompass more of the city itself. Uh, during the time of expansion. Um, they've been around in the city for a while. Do you think he's uh, giving us that, a tip on who built the warehouse? Who owns the warehouse? Wait, who? Well, oh, not or where they right, disappeared. Yeah. I think it's where, where, I mean, I wanted to ask them where they, where everyone disappeared, where they were checking out, but and it did not look like he wanted to give away that information. Or the, people were sealed, the sealed floor that Ziggy saw was sealed with mason tools and not by the form that Ziggy did. So here's the so thing. Pick masonry could be, oh. they could have the ability, at least more information or the ability to, for us to dig deeper mm. into the ground. 
I'm going to go ahead and venture a guess. Say whoever was potentially involved, whether it's a Mason or someone else, maybe this mm-hmm. doc person. It was probably outside of the captain's jurisdiction or perhaps outside of his orders to do this. I think this note is our ticket, or I should say is our, um, it grants uh, freedom for this DAC to share with us information that perhaps he would not share otherwise. Why Mm -hmm. else Mm -hmm. would the captain include his signature on this note? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not to prove to DAC that we are allies and not adversaries. Well, it sounds like we need to find this DAC guy. Uh, Mm -hmm. Turkey guy, where do we find DAC? I'm just dwarf. messing with you, Zaire. Poor Zaire. Uh, his, uh, I wouldn't, his, you said his store is in, like, the masonry headquarters in the Lake District, Eric? No, it's not in the Lake District. He's just done a lot of work for the Lake I District. there. Um, would, the, I which you've all seen it before, there's a very large statue sculpture in the center of the city. And the masonry building is immediately adjacent to that. Oh yeah, I remember when we passed that. Yep. Mm. It's hard to miss, honestly. So, was there anyone else in the room with us when we were with the captain, or was it just us and him? It was just you and him. Um, but the guards were stationed outside the door as well. When you left. Because they were listening. Okay, yep, yep. Uh, that you were letting where the, um where the masonry uh, building is. Well, that's not too, too far from here. Perhaps we should uh, make our way. Yeah, think? it's actually mm-hmm. pretty close. It's just kind of like the next block over if you guys wanted to head over there. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, you make your way over to the uh, Dwarf's Pick Masonry. Uh, as you approach the building, the first thing you notice is obviously the massive carved sculpture statue um, depicting a horse and rider um, outside of uh, the building. And below the statue uh, is the relatively plain building. Uh, it's made of gray stone. It's got a thatch roof. Um, and as you all kind of walk in, the door opens into a large open space that's strewn with various rock carving tools, bits of broken stone. Um, will look to be unfinished carvings and blocks and things. Um, and seated at one of those blocks is uh, a rather portly looking dwarf who is fiddling with some tools and appears to be taking some measurements of the block that's in front of him. Uh, excuse me, are you deck by any chance? Uh, he kind of stops for a moment, um, turns over to turns to you all, says... Uh, no, no, that's uh, that's not me. That's uh, my boss. You looking for Dak? I am looking for Dak. Yeah, could you help us find him, please? Yeah, hang on, uh, just a minute. The black and, the sound, uh, I love he, it. Uh, <laughs> he kind of walks, uh, walks out the back door, and you hear him kind of call Dak's name for a moment. Um, before a uh, few minutes, uh, just a few moments, uh, uh you see, um. A uh, very slim uh, but tall uh, Earth Ganassi, actually, uh, walk in. Um, He's got very sort of wiry uh, muscles showing under a leather work vest that he's wearing um, with sort of a couple of tools um, thrown into uh, uh, like leather worked uh, hoops, loops that are in his vest. Um, Sort of uh, some of them are kind of clinking as he comes through the door. Um, And uh, he kind of walks in and brushes some dirt off of his forehead, uh, sees you all standing there, and he uh, says, uh, Hello. Welcome to Dwarf's Pick Masonry. What can I help you all with? Submit, sir. I was not quite expecting you when I walked into the Dwarf's Pick Masonry. Uh, you're not the dwarf. Yes, no, it's uh, a rather clever play on words that uh, my grandfather was rather proud of. It is uh, Dwarf's Pick is a rock tool. Uh, the We're also the pick of the dwarves for masonry. They come to us 
for masonry. So it's uh, he was quite excited about the the play on words. He he spoke of the name often, but uh, yes, no, I am uh, the owner of the establishment. My name is Dr. Dan. Um, but we have many dwarves with us who who, uh, who work and, and study with us in, in the masonry uh, field, and, and we are the best of the best. I can guarantee. Wonderful. Skilled in your craft and skilled in your marketing, I see. That's impressive. Good for you. Good job, everyone. Now, I, uh, you might be able to help us. I have um, a weapon that I was hoping to have crafted. It has very um, unique dimension specifications, if you will. I'm hoping you might maybe help uh me shine some light on how i might be able to uh, acquire something like this here i have the the specifications written down here on this piece of paper uh, he it. takes the paper and as he's kind of looking at you he goes you're hoping to make a weapon out of stone and he opens the the note and there's kind of a, a moment um he kind of thinks to himself nods folds up the note says uh well, that'd be a very uh, specific kind of masonry to make something that would withstand, I'm sure, the blows that you would uh, you would be wielding with it. Uh, why don't you come back with me to uh, to my uh, my residence in the back, and uh, perhaps we can discuss this further. Seems like it'd be a, a wonderful challenge for me to, to take on. Um, I knew we came to the right place. And so uh, he walks you all uh, out the back door that he came in through, um, and there's kind of like a little outside like almost like a courtyard kind of thing um that leads to uh what looks more like a traditional house um and it's a pretty modest uh home um also made of stone um and uh as he leads you all inside uh closes the door behind you um he uh he just takes a seat and hands you back the note um he says uh Captain Osirian sent you all. What, he did. Uh, what's the business that he sent you here for, if you don't mind me asking? Well, we had actually approached him hoping to find some answers. We uh, stumbled across the rather disturbing and unusual uh, uh, happening in the city up in the docks. Near the warehouses or the storehouses where most of the food ships are kept. We noticed the rest seeming to work together. I see you nodding. This is probably something you're familiar with. And we, uh, uh, you know, our trail had led us to the captain. He mentioned that he had sent some teams of his men to uh, try and better understand what was happening, perhaps uh, try and stop the rats from taking the food from the houses, and those teams did not return. Uh, but, of course, you know, him being a public servant of the city, he was at the... the the mercy of the barons and the city government, and his uh, attention was needed elsewhere. And uh, uh, apologies for the all the cloak and dagger of it all. Uh, the bastards running this city—they have decided after we lost. Well, I say we after the captain lost those two teams. He, uh, the barons, decided that it was more important to protect their own supply than to ensure the supply for the rest of the city. So the city guard was, um, the resources were reallocated towards protecting the supply for the barons and the Lake District and some of the surrounding areas, uh, rather than addressing this problem more directly. The captain was vocal in his uh, disagreement with the barons and was almost fired from his position as a result. Um, and so I believe he's just being perhaps a bit more um, uh, cautious in dealing with this uh, than he normally would have been. Um, but anyway, that is to say, I have been attempting to find a solution to this problem since the city guard was pulled away. Uh, you see the community here, very reliant on a lot of that food, myself included, to a degree. And that's... We've sort of been trying to do as much as we can to find a solution, but obviously none have, have presented themselves yet. Um, I've heard the problem's only gotten worse since the guard was pulled away. And I can tell you, I've attempted as best I could to uh, 
to get out there and I've tried to mend some of the holes that they've been coming through. Uh, but it's very unusual. The floor of the warehouse is made of stone specifically to keep the rats and other vermin from being able to tunnel in. Uh, I assure you, I don't, I don't know how they've, they've been getting through and if they're chewing through stone, then they are some mutant fucking rats. I'll tell you that right now. Well, you don't have to convince mm -hmm. us we saw it ourselves. There's something very wrong about these rats. Yeah, I, I wish I had more answers for you. Um, but what I do have now, is coin. Uh, some of the community have actually put together a bit of coin, and if you all are the group that I heard about at the Academy, I heard you all handled yourselves fairly well at the events that transpired. Uh, it's not much, but I've been able to put together, like I said, a bit of money from those who are willing to contribute to a solution, and perhaps if you all are willing to go investigate, maybe we could uh, come to an agreement. Yes, no, of course, we definitely would uh, want to investigate. You know, I feel terrible potentially taking money away from people who are already starving, you know, we're already stuck in the city as it is. Um, maybe don't worry so much about that just yet. But I guess... But my... We won't say no, but we, we won't say no. Okay, um, well, maybe... Uh, but maybe... Well, I, I think we're happy to help. I mean, we want to figure out what's going on. I guess, where did these people disappear from? And what did they go with? Were they, they haven't returned? Like, were they unprepared? Like, what did they bring in anticipation of, of what they were going to face if it was rats? And trying to think about how we can prepare ourselves differently. I'm not too sure. They followed through some of the holes that were created by these mutant fucking rats. Uh, and as far as I know, they weren't many teams. Again, it was an issue of rats in the sewers or in the, you know, in the tunnels under the city. And yet, for some reason, neither of the, the teams that, that were sent down have returned. I can't speak to what they were prepared for. Um, but I don't think, I think perhaps maybe they underestimated what they were going into. Um, but no, they, they, they never returned, unfortunately. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, we, we are the group that you heard of, you know, group called, and we'll come out with some things. Okay. Well, I mean, not as important at the moment, uh. Oh my god, are we going to be the Rat Pack? No. No! <laughs> we're not. At least we're not right now. It could be like the AKA, like, we are blah blah, AKA the Rat Pack. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. This is like bro, like three of knowing every each other. Like, and it's I don't true. know if it's like... It's true. Oh, it took us like, there. it took us like a full like six to eight months to get our last group names. Oh. Yeah, I know. Rat Pack's number one right now, it though. It's cape. The cape of billowing. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if I, I appreciate you all being so uh, cognizant of the financial struggles of the people here in the city. Perhaps if you're at least willing to take a look for now, and if you're able to provide a solution, then maybe we could all compensate you fairly. Yes, I think that sounds fine. So perhaps, and you tell us if you think this is maybe the right way to go. You know, last time we saw this, we were just exploring, not to really know what we were looking for. Maybe we go back to the warehouses, and uh, hopefully we can catch these rats in action, and maybe instead of peeling off the path that they used to get to the storehouse, maybe instead we... Uh, See where do they go, and maybe they lead us to some answers. So I have my suspicions, personally. Um, there are a network of sewers beneath the city, and uh, those sewers do provide drainage for the food storehouses. Um, and so 
if you are looking for a place to start, I'm sure I could direct you towards maybe one of the entrances, and you can maybe do some poking around there. And uh, if they are using that, then I think there should be plenty of evidence that they're there. Maybe you could follow that, and rather than have to mm -hmm. wait for them to find another way to pop up into one of the storehouses. That sounds like a better plan, yes. That's good. Right. Uh, well, um, yes. Uh, if you need to speak with us further, or if there's anything else that comes up in the meantime, we have been staying at the Inn of the Visionaries. Don't ask. And, uh, you know, feel free to inquire with Terrell there, and she's been good to us, and I'm sure to sure provide any message. Yes. Uh, I will let you know if there's anything that I find out. If there's anything I can help with, let me know. Um, I wish I could be of more assistance. I don't quite know what to say. No, no. I mean, this is uh, just is good for us to uh, at least have someone outside of the city guard that we can confer with about this. Uh, that was the first thing we thought of was, does the city guard know about this? And now that we understand a bit more of the circumstances, it's uh, clearly there's more to it. So, Yeah, please, please understand, the captain would be uh, first to be working on this, but he feels that to maintain his position and perhaps at least be a, a voice of reason in the ears of the barons is perhaps more beneficial for the city at this point. Um, I totally get it. I, I understand politics, maybe more than I care to. And it's better to have someone like him in that role than someone who's even more how oh, you say, uh, vagrant or yes. beholden to the barons. That I've uh, been doing my best to work with him as, as much as I can to ensure that he does not overextend himself. But uh, in the meantime, uh, if you wish anything I can provide, please let me know. And uh, I'll do my best to get you answers or resources if I can, but we don't have much. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we appreciate your time. Good luck, and let me know what you find. I'll turn to leave. Unless anyone else has anything they want to ask or say or do. No. Let's bounce. All right. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Uh... So, I mean, he had offered to show you guys to the entrance to yes. like, the city sewers. So, if you, whenever you're ready, you can probably go back to him for that. Um, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to do in the meantime. It's kind of later in the day, but not by any means late, in the, at, like not nighttime or anything like that. So, uh, friends, here's the thing. Just, yeah, yeah. Good night. No, I just assumed that he would have shown us on a map of some kind or described where we could enter the sewers, not that we would have to go back to him to show us. Is it something that he physically has to show us or would he be able to describe it to us? Um, I mean, he could definitely describe it, but it's not like it's uh, like marked on a map or anything like that, right? Like it's usually like, it's like a maintenance hatch type of thing, right? Okay. It's not okay. um, always readily apparent. Um, okay. But he could show you if you wanted or if you wanted to go back to him and have him just describe it and see if you guys could find it, you could. I guess we already left. We already left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Tommy. Um, you know, I know we have all of these, you know, texts that we're lining up for ourselves here, but it's been on my mind all day. I just have such an urge to fight. And I wonder if uh, maybe we can wait at least a day before we do some sewer diving. This Friday night fight night after all. You're proposing to go. Some action. You're proposing Who, to fight you... the beasts that, that Timu brought in. 
Mm-hmm. I am. Be well, aware of the types of creatures and you know the ones that are. Are you really aware different. of the type of creatures that I faced out in the plains? Did I tell you how I lost my foot? He look, looks down to see if you still have a full speed. No, I have. I I, I brought it up last session. I have Did a you? brass, a yeah, brass yeah, prosthetic yeah. on my right foot. Oh, yeah. No, no. but I can imagine. It was a, it's a harrowing story. I don't, need to hear it. A while. I, I don't need to hear it now, though. You're asking about creatures. I mean, I'm going to look them up and down and say, you're quite the creature yourself. Thank you, Swipes. I think that was a compliment. I don't think it was. And she talks <laughs> in the chair one more time. Well, I'll take it as one. She's well, talking in riddles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't maybe, know. Maybe I see if you want to fight, but I mean, if the fight's already, I mean, they might have someone already scheduled, right? Kami, I don't want you to get your hopes up. If it's a big Friday night fight, they might already have a lineup of people. That's what I'm thinking, but uh, I don't know. Zaire's friend, when we were there, he seemed uh, pretty excited at the thought of me joining the fight. I'm sure if we went and talked to him, he might find a place for me. That's what I'm t- All I'm saying is I'd be, I'd be interested in uh, making the, uh, the, the, the word with the Inquisition. Thank you. Well, I, let's let's do it. I I know that you could definitely you could win. You could definitely win. I I put some money on you too. And if we're going to make some money, I want to earn it the fair way in the arena. If you pass, I I, I promise I'll take good care of you. Oh my! If God, I pass, if I pass, make me into the strongest, scariest zombie that this city has ever seen. Zyger, do you hear me? It will be a pivotal step on your next journey. I trust your talent. All right, you guys heading back to the uh, the pit, Reaper's Playground. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Zayir, you uh, managed to kind of finesse your way through um, to the offices. Uh, I say offices of the pit, but it is really essentially a dressing room where you find Bazool uh, preparing. Um, and he is just there with like uh, some sort of like powder makeup, trying to like do makeup and like, he's very much, again, he is about presentation uh, and flash. And so he is there. Yeah. Uh, and as you kind of knock on the door um, and enter, um, as it kind of finishes touching up a part of his his makeup, he turns to, to look at you and he says, uh, well, was Timo any help for you all? Yes, he was. Um, you know, I think uh, I've got a friend here that uh, has a proposition for you. What's yeah, that? Well, you're kind of like like references to. to he like points you. Uh, <laughs> what oh, can no. I say? I knew I couldn't stay away for long in a place oh, like this. My uh, friend, my friend, magnificent. Is it just you fighting, or will you all be fighting? It's a question for the group. I definitely plan to join. I don't know if anyone else was planning to join as well. Um, as Kami's talking, though, I'm going to press the digitation, like, like, to make Kami look like even, like, 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 like put, like, extra flair to his presentation while he's, like, trying to make the, the case that he wants to find. I like, I like to think she provides the fantasy version of the perfect gym lighting that makes everyone's muscles look bigger than they are. Very good. Perfect. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Um, is, well, well, I... I could organize something that would be a one-on-one if that's what you're interested in, or we've got a group fight schedule that I'd be happy to bump some of our uh, uh, other participants for if you all are willing to participate in that. What is it that you're looking for? What can I interest you in today? Here's the question then. Uh, does What is the, the reward for coming out victorious? These types of battles? If you're fighting solo or as a group, is the reward bigger for a group fight or is it uh, oh, yes. smaller? It's bigger. bigger. Okay. Fight. Yes. How big and how big is a group for a group fight? 
Well, I'm sure you all could hold your own, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, if you need more assistance, I'm sure I could find some others to join in with you. We'll do it. Uh, uh, I, whoever wants, I, I have no obligation, but whoever I wants to fight. would like those to know that if you are preparing yourself to fight, I think there's a prepare yourself to potentially die as well. I, I yeah, face that the year I know. I face that every day. And if if it happens today, and I become a, and I become a, another branch on my kin tree, another spirit to help someone down the line of House Kvar, so be it. Well. Uh, Diggy, my friend, well, you've been awfully silent on this. Oh, you're, I, I can't hear you. Diggy, maybe you're so silent because we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no! He's, um, oh my god, he's mute. He's mute, the big boss. Oh, he's the big yes. boss. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's a little, he's a little spy. He's a rat. Oh my god. Okay, can you hear me now? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, I was talking to myself for like 30 minutes, I think. Oh, no. Things? What's up? Were you saying things? I was like, under my breath. Over you? Under my breath, but I was like not committing to anything, so it's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. You but yeah, is, is it only fights? Now. Is it, is it fighting with like only fists or can we do other shit yeah, what are the group, rules? um use what you have at your disposal i suppose but if you harm the audience uh i don't think you're gonna get paid That's i won't fine. pay you. okay okay Dude, i'm super so keep it contained down. keep it contained but uh use what you have at your disposal they like to see a one-on-one -on -one really come down to fisticuffs but when it comes to a group a lot of action, a lot of excitement, you know, a lot of flair with the arcane. Yo, I'm, I'm into it. That. That, I'm I knew that. What do you think? May I just want you to be aware, you know, this is this is a fight. We might die. <laughs> Zaire deals with If you're there, I'm there. Okay. If if we all do this, I'm I'm with you. And Zaire, in, are you in your pit? Uh, I told you when I started here that I would not fight. You did. I never, I never pressured you. I never wanted to pressure you. I'm not still. I'm just asking. Marketing purposes, you know. How would you market? Well, I gotta know what I'm gonna say to the crowd. Get them all jazzed up. Maybe even pull in some people off the street who weren't coming in in the first place. It's like WWE when like the janitor is sweeping and all of a sudden he rips off his, his janitor outfit and he's got another like wrestler's <laughs> outfit underneath and he joins the fray. I'll fight. Okay. Yeah, and then magnificent. In uh just real quick, May, in your head, you hear Tommy say, um Don't worry, May, we'll be here to help and don't forget. The more fights like this you get under your belt, you'll be better prepared for the fight that matters. You're okay? right, and I, ha you know, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. I know you it. always do. He kind of looks between the two of you, like clearly there was something going on, but he couldn't hear you guys saying any words. <laughs> We're both just he, looking at each other, like. He kind of looks between the two of you. He goes, "That's weird." Uh, <laughs> Exciting though, I've got just the fight lined up for you five, and it's gonna be magnificent. It'll be a showstopper. I am thrilled you've all decided to come back and, and join. Yes, this is what I wanted. Well, uh, there are some rooms downstairs for you all to get prepared for the fight. If there's anything you need, uh, they go to my room. No, no, but. Uh, this would be a great <laughs> opportunity for you to get down there if you survive and or need to. Um, you'll survive. It's not that bad. I promise. It's going to be great, exciting, uh, but not too dangerous, I hope. Um, but yes, if you all wish to uh, to head down to 
uh, to the preparation rooms. You can all prepare yourselves, take whatever you need. There's some food down there, water, whatever you need to get get yourself ready to go, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll call on you when it's time. Fantastic. It's gonna be a good show. And uh, with that, he kind of uh, turns back to doing his makeup and starts to kind of like hum to himself a little bit in a way that he wasn't before. Uh, we made this day. See Zaire, see everyone. And Zaire, you're familiar with the pit well enough to know where you're headed. Yep. Um, but I think uh, you guys can all do anything you need to to prepare if there's anything you need to do that doesn't require a long rest. Um, and I think maybe we will pick up with the pit fight uh, next time. Shall I don't know, I... like, can I change all my spells, which I can't do because we have no long rest because I have no combat spells planned? Yeah, great, 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 great. <laughs> okay. That's okay, utility, utility. Can't trip yeah. utility. It's going to be great. Woo! It's going to be great. Can't wait. <laughs> In the jungle. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll March 14th, bill it. Make a play bill. That's yeah. Post. Oh. All of our characters, Rumble in the Jungle, Rumble in Reapers, hey. whatever, Playground. Reaper playground. Hey. Come to play. For, come to play. Um, homies, come to play. <laughs> Jesus.